Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Dear saints, Jesus is the bread of life. He comes down from heaven to feed us. He gives you his very flesh. That is his will. To give himself so that you may live. And it is the will of the Father to send the Son to, to be a sacrifice for your sins. His blood is shed so that you live. You stand completely forgiven on account of your Jesus. God's will is for you to be forgiven, to be righteous and to be sanctified. Dear saints, God's will is for you. It benefits you. It is for your good. We pray in the third petition of the Lord's Prayer that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, knowing that God is for us and that his will is for our good, you might think that the life of the baptized Christian would be easy. There would be no problems, no suffering, no sickness. But look around. Obviously, this isn't true. There's sickness and suffering everywhere. Maybe you might expect that that, that would be outside the church, the sickness and suffering, these afflictions. But not here amongst his saints. See, God has not promised you a life of ease. He has promised you a cross. A daily cross, no less. For Jesus said, If anyone wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. The, cross, the cost of being a child of God is steep. See, God has a thing for crosses. They, they seem to be the, the instruments of how he serves his people. The suffering, affliction, and condemnation of your Jesus on the cross serves to, to give you the forgiveness of all your sins. Yet he also uses our daily cross of suffering and affliction to thwart our sinful flesh, our will. See, God makes you nothing so that he can be everything. And what we find in our God and in his will is eternal life and the forgiveness of all our sins. So to pray for God's will to be done is to pray for your will to be destroyed. The will of your flesh, it hates God and his good and gracious will. It hates it because God's will saves you. His will is to provide for your every need, both body and soul. His will is to serve you forgiveness through word and sacrament. And your sinful flesh cannot stand that. It hates God's will. It hates God's will because everything that God does for you, everything he gives you, your sinful flesh wants to do for itself. Everything he freely gives, you want to earn. See, your old Adam wants to be your Savior and Redeemer, not Jesus Christ. So your sinful nature despises, despises uh, all the dangers and troubles that lie ahead. It thinks that it can clean up the mess that you've made. This is pure foolishness. The root of, of the problem is that your sinful nature wants to prove that it doesn't need God at all. Your sinful nature doesn't want God's forgiveness. It doesn't want Christ's sacrifice on the cross. It doesn't want Jesus, period. Oh, how perverse our sinful natures are. How terribly wicked and oppressed, opposed to God, the old Adam is that remains in us. That old Adam, it needs to die. 
It needs to be drowned in the holy waters of baptism each and every day. You need to be saved from your old Adam, delivered from your sinful nature. This is how God works. This is how he works his will. He works so that we hate our sinful flesh, that we hate our sin, that he brings us to repentance. It is his good will that you are brought to hate your sin. He brings you to to hate your sin, to repentance, but to also look to the cross to see how exactly God loves you. This is the essence of God's will, dear saints, to save and serve you. By praying the Lord's Prayer, you pray that God will destroy your will. For you are, in fact, praying against yourself. And and this is the scary thing about praying this petition. To pray for his will to be done is to pray for torment, to pray for adversity, to pray for suffering of every kind, so that our will is destroyed. It is through affliction that God attacks and destroys our sinful flesh. Your sinful flesh doesn't go down without a fight, and it most certainly is painful. To pray for God's will is to be done is not to pray for these tribulations and trials to avoid us, to go around us. It is to pray for patience and endurance through them. Pray in this petition for comfort and peace and strength to endure his will, knowing that he has promised to sustain you, that he will give you these very gifts that you pray for. Suffering mortifies our sinful flesh. That is, it puts it to death. It makes it nothing. God uses the crucible of suffering to refine your faith. The the impurities of of false doctrine, bad belief, the dross of your sinful nature are burned out through suffering so that you have a newfound purity in your faith. The devil wishes that you wouldn't believe any of this. He wants you to doubt God's word, to doubt God's will for you, that it is good. The devil wishes you to despise pain and suffering, to think that in your affliction that God has abandoned you, that God hates you. He wants you to think that nothing good can come out of pain, affliction, suffering, trial. He wishes you to become anxious and impatient, that that these things can't possibly be good can't possibly be part of God's will. The devil wishes that you would turn anywhere, to anyone but God, in these kinds of tribulation. The devil's a liar. He's a defeated and wretched being, and he only seeks that you be condemned and stand in your sin before God. God's will Not only is our sinful flesh, our will, brought to nothing, but in God's will, the devil's will is also thwarted. God's will is for you to turn to him in every time of trouble. Thus, for you to pray in this petition, you pray, O Father, comfort me, a poor, miserable sinner. I can't bear your hand. The burden is too great without you. Strengthen me, dear Lord. It's in that prayer that the Father's will is done. For in in your pleading, he has brought you to abandon yourself, to abandon everything about you, and to seek only him. The reality of your life in Christ Jesus is that the Father keeps, uh, keeps you in his will each and every moment. He brings you to himself always. He shelters and protects you from the devil. He protects you from yourself, from your sinful nature. He fulfills and provides for your every need. And he promises that you will never hunger or thirst. But he has given you the bread of life. 
the river of living waters in your Jesus. Jesus stands as your good shepherd, that he is with you, that he keeps you in the Father's will. He guides you through every shadowy valley of trial and trouble to his good green pastures. He feeds you his very self to nourish and sustain your body and soul, to forgive your sins. All this he does because you are precious to him. He loves you. God's will is good, and it is for you. As God's child, the Father has promised that it is his will that, you will never, that he will never cast you away. The Son has promised that he will be with you always. The Holy Spirit continues to help you to endure, to give you strength, to call you to the gospel, to keep you in the one true faith. Have no fear, dear saints, in the times that lie ahead. God's will will be done. Pray for your will to be broken. Pray for your will to be destroyed and brought to nothing. For God promises to keep you in his will so that you will endure all things. He promises to strengthen your faith so you may rejoice in the good news that God loves you too much to allow your will to be done in your life. So God's will is done for your good. His will is to forgive you and draw you to repentance. God's will is to love you. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.